Hi, I'm Martin Roberts and this is my son, Scott Roberts. Hello. <laughs> so what I decided to do is DIY for kids. Simple projects that children can get involved in. Now I've tempered it to different ages. Scott is 13, yeah. so he's going to take on a few more ambitious projects. Uh, Megan is 10, she's going to take on slightly simpler projects, but you can gauge it depending on your children's age. Uh, but throughout I'm going to be considering first and foremost children's safety. So at all points uh, they are going to be wearing glasses where needed, they're going to be wearing uh, face masks where needed uh, and also, bear with me a second, that's not a good start, keep rolling. <sighs> Forgot these, gloves. Yeah, so they're going to be wearing gloves when they need them as well. Don't be cutting off the finger. So, cutting off my finger. Well, yeah, but the thing is, a glove would not stop your finger being cut off. Yeah, but it would protect it because, like, it's less bad injury. Like, if you squish it, it's not going to get, it's not going to squish through. That's a good point. And why are we wearing goggles while you're on this then? Glasses? Because then you don't get dust in your eyes and stuff dust like that. Dust and like things wood. in your eyes and wood. And when would we wear a mask? Uh, if you're doing something with, like, that's going to create loads of small dust particles. Like so sanding, so sanding something and like that. Soaring and stuff. He's on, he's, on, he's on the money. Right. So, I'm um, going to keep it simple with stuff that you might have lying around at home. So, a few bits and pieces, old bits of wood. I'm aware that it might be hard to get hold of bits and pieces right now, that you can order stuff online. But I'm trying to work on the basis that, let's look at what we've got lying around in the shed. Now, there are some specialist bits and pieces, like um, we're going to be using some hinges, uh, some brackets, uh, and various other things. Now, those are available online. There's lots of places that do that. Screw fix, um, tool station, all what sorts of paper. For? Well, I'm going to show you how you use these in a minute, but it's a good question, Scott. This is a, a way of holding something together quite successfully. So right. I think if we use brackets, we're going to use bits of wood, uh, we're going to use screws. So I've got a screw selection here. Now, do you know the difference in between different screws? Uh, for different like thicknesses of materials? Yeah, so the, ba the basic difference in screws is two things. One, the length, yep, so there you go, you've got uh, two different lengths there, but also the thickness. So if you look at the differences between these sets of screws there, can you see... Oh uh, yeah, that one's way thicker and that one's quite thin. That's right. So when you needed really sort of, um, uh, so, something which you really quite, want to make sure that it's really quite strong, yeah. that screw there is obviously going to be stronger so than that screw. why wouldn't you just always use the thick ones to then... It's a good question because you might have smaller bits of wood which and the would big break, screw would, would break. break yeah. But I'm going to teach you something in terms of um, how not to make the wood, uh, the wood break as well. So we've got Hello. different lengths and these are gauged by this, it's all in millimetres here. So 50 is the, um, is the length, so that's 50 millimetres. In, when you're working with wood and working in, in, in these things in general, uh, the, everything's normally in millimetres because then there's no confusion. So you've got millimetres there, and the four is the size. So a five is bigger, so that's going to be a five by 50, and that is a four, four by 50, 50, okay? So just when you're ordering screws, or you want to make sure you're getting the right screws. So a, a nice mixture of screws like this is a really good thing to have. So I was thinking about projects that you could get involved in, that you could do. Yeah. So actually, I want to build something that you want. Right. So without going into too much detail, apart from gaming, mm -hmm. what is one of the things you really love? Trampolining. Right, trampolining. Any other sports? Parkour. Any other sports? Um, swimming. Swimming, yeah, okay. Other sports? Using a thing that has two wheels? Car? Oh, no. A mountain bike. Mountain bike. Yes, that. A bike. <laughs> you like mountain biking, right? Yeah, I love it. Right. So we've got, we're lucky we've got a reasonable sized garden. I thought, how cool would it be mm -hmm. to have a mountain bike jump? That would be pretty cool. Yeah? Yeah. So, what I thought was we would build you a mountain bike jump. Well, okay. actually, you are going to build you a mountain bike jump. When you're starting a project, one of the right. good things to do is to get down some ideas on paper because then you can make all your mistakes. I've just squished a fly there. You can make all your mistakes on the paper, and that's a lot easier to do. Yeah. So, I reckon if we're going to have a mountain bike, um, okay, two wheels. Needed. two wheels, right, and we want to have a ramp. Now, what kind of angle? Do you think that ramp wants to be? It should start off like kind of going out and it should curve up. It shouldn't be a flat jump, it should be curved. Up. You want me to try and create you a curved ramp? That's what In the bike. back garden. Okay. Out of bits of material I've got lying around. They're supposed to be curved, but you know. <laughs> Can you make do with one that's flat? Yeah, sure. Right. Yeah. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> so let's assume uh, we got this here. So um, we want to create a jump that's a bit like that. So I reckoned, what kind of angle do you want to go on that? I mean, is it like that, or Actually, is it like a what's, 45 what's, degree angle? 45 degrees. Yeah. So that is quite. You know what that's like. That's like. That's like that. Is that going to be too steep, or is that? Maybe, I mean, yeah, maybe. maybe yeah, I maybe was thinking. Thirty degrees, yeah, maybe. Yeah, thirty. Okay, so maybe a thirty-degree angle, so like yeah. that. So what we want is one piece of wood that's going up like that, and then the main thing is, when you cycle your bicycle that way, you are going to push this whole thing in that down. direction, and also down. down yeah. So I think we need to be bigger. We need you to should. create uh, some support on that end there, yeah. which is really quite strong. Okay. Okay. So then that will stop the whole thing moving. So I have got a bit of old bits of wood and let's talk through. So you have it. So in order to do that, mm -hmm. what we're going to need is we're going to need a bit of wood. This is called a cutting list, a bit of wood for uh, the actual ramp. Yes. And then for this end here, we're going to create two legs, mm -hmm. which will support the thing. And to make it extra strong, we're going to put a bracing bit along the bottom. And then this bit sits on top of there like that. So right. that it slides back. It goes basically like that. Okay. So this is the ramp and then it, that's yeah. like supporting it. That's like supporting it. Okay, so this, and the main thing we want to do is make sure that this is really well attached to this bit of wood. That's and nice. it's really important. When you're designing something or thinking about something, you've got to work out where are the stresses going to be? What is going to be the, the, the pressure point on what we're building? Because then you can try and strengthen up that particular bit, all right? Yeah. So um, we've discovered that that is, so these joints, the, where we build this and attach this, these legs to this is going to be really key. So that's so we know we need basically three bits of strong wood and another bit to go at the top. So it's only four bits of wood. That's all we yeah. need. Right, so yeah, piece of cake. Yeah. Right, so we put our, our things down. Now, um, w one of the, the other things I'm going to teach you right now is that when you drill into wood, if you put a screw in to a thick bit of wood, right. it's not going to be a problem. But at the moment you start putting anything towards the edge, it's going to split. It's going to split. So, do you have any idea how we can stop it splitting? Um, use a smaller screw. That would definitely do the job. Yep, smaller screw would definitely work. Or we can drill what's called a pilot hole. Because if we drill a little hole first into the wood, with obviously with the drill, and then we put the screw in afterwards, the, the wood has already got a hole in there. So the screw Why does, does not. Help? Well, because you've created a, a, if you like, a hole which the screw is going down into. So it's only actually these little ah, so teethy it's not, it's bits. It's not breaking the wood straight away. No, it's, it's just, just the teethy bits right. that are grabbing onto it. All right. Yeah. So that's called a pilot hole. And the pilot hole needs to be about the same diameter as the, um, the main shaft of the screw. So can you see there underneath where the teeth are, the sort of that distance there, you see how that's roughly the same size as that? Yeah. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use a drill that's just a little bit smaller uh, than where those teeth are. Okay? Cool. And, that, and I'm going to drill a pilot hole. So all you're going to need to do is use the drill to create pilot holes and screw this thing together. But right. the joints we're going to use are either putting huge great screws through where we can. Yeah. That might work, but I've also got these brackets. So you can get brackets in all sorts of shapes and sizes. What and they do. So a bracket is basically used to hold things together. Right. So that there mm -hmm. could hold something on like, like that and like that. So it could hold that surface to that surface. Right. And, yeah, and it you all screw them in and, and you screw them in into that there. This one, as you can see, is really thick. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's gonna be a nice strong bracket. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. one is much thinner. Yeah. But it's also strong in a different way. So if you're using that to support a piece of wood which is going like that and like that, then yeah. as long as you know where the stresses are, that bracket can actually work really well. And there's all sorts of brackets you can get, all sorts of shapes and sizes. From, that's called a T bracket, that's called an angle bracket, which goes in the corner. And it's just good to know that you've got these bits of metal 
uh, which can actually help us. So yeah, we've got some brackets, we've got some screws, we've got our bits of wood. Now, in terms of wood, these are old bits of um, fence panel that were lying around the garden, okay? So I've actually cut them already, so that's probably something which an adult will have to do because uh, you use a circular yeah. saw or whatever. That is, yeah. is not, not the easiest things. But assuming that we're going to do this at, at 30 degrees, I have cut the top of that at 30 degrees. Okay. And I've created two of those like that. And I've also cut this to be the right size there for you because I, want, I didn't think there was much point in just going through that. But we'll, 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 we'll talk about that in a minute. But I've cut this at 30 degrees. So the idea right. being, can you get an idea of how this is going to work? I'll show you anyway. First of all, let's clear some of this stuff off the table. Shoes down there. Give ourselves a nice, good workspace. Now, this particular project, um, I don't think you need any glasses and um, you certainly don't need a mask if you're not creating any dusk. You might want to wear um, uh, gloves to stop you getting splinters, but what do you want? Do you want to wear gloves? I don't know. Probably, you, yeah. You, yeah, you can wear gloves. Yeah, I mean, sure. the only thing is when you, when, sometimes when yeah, you're wearing gloves, operating up. these is. Yeah. I think in this instance, just be careful of splinters. Okay. And uh, for, in this particular job, I don't think we need too many bits and pieces like that. Um, tape measure. Mm -hmm. Just as a matter of interest, do you know how to measure a tape measure? Measure a tape measure. Well, as in, do you, do you know how to measure that piece of wood? So what actually is the, the length of that piece of wood? Uh, now you're probably working in metric, aren't you? You don't even know what these and other numbers mean. These are called inches. That's what Daddy used to use when he was growing up. So it's 13 and a half inches. So that is 13 and a half inches exactly. Yeah, but how in centimeters? What is that? Uh, um, I don't know. Where is it? 30. I mean, it's really big. 34. Yeah, and then. 34.3. Three. Right, so remember what I said before about millimetres, if that's 30 centimetres, what is that in millimetres? It's, it's 10 millimetres in a centimetre. So, so that's where you can see why it's sometimes good to measure, 344 yeah, in so centimetres. Yeah, using decimals. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we now know that's, so that's, that's what, so that's a really important thing to know. You're doing the right thing there, that was right on the edge. So you, you've measured that. And if you were to be measuring something, you might sometimes want to check also on both sides just to check if it's the same distance uh, on both sides. But anyway, that's the tape measure. There's lots of different way, tape measures you can use, but that's a, that's a, a standard one. All right. right. So here we have uh, an old bit of work surface. So this was actually... When they, when, they, when they make a kitchen, sometimes they cut out the place where the sink is going to go, or else they put a piece of work surface like this, which is a bit too long. Okay. And this was just an off cut. So this has been lying around in the shed for years, all right? But I thought, oh, that's wide enough to be a takeoff ramp, okay? Yeah. So the idea. only thing I've done, which again, you get an adult to do, is I've, as I've angled that so that yeah. when you hit that with your bike tire, it's not going to go, because it, it, the alternative would be to hit that. And that would just, if you hit that corner, you'd just go over your bars. Yeah, and you, your wheel so that would be good. So you think that angle's going to be all right. So that is going to be the bottom. So basically what we're going to do is just create this frame, which this thing sits on, as I said, with that going like that, and then if you just help me for a second, okay. if, if I lift this up and you just put those, that down there and those two things, one at one end, like that, right, and one at the other end, right, and then the bit in the middle, okay, so that is going to be our ramp. Uh -huh. Now, do you reckon that looks solid enough? Does that look about right? Out on this side. Yeah, no, we, we, we're going to make that right in a second. Okay. But does that look like it would be a good enough angle? Definitely. Yeah? Yeah, that's going to be, yeah. Wicked? Right. So first of all, we need to build this. So we've, we've tried it in place. So now we're going to construct this. So we need to make this solid like that. 
Yeah. So, what do you think, how could we make that solid? Um, yeah. So let's get our brackets. Like yeah, that would work. And then put another one there. Yeah. And then you screw those in those. And then yeah, but I think that would probably do it. So, because this is soft wood, and that's, you know the difference between soft wood and hardwood? Soft one, soft one, hard. Very good. Soft wood is stuff that comes from like spruce trees. Um, a lot of this stuff that, that's in the garden is made from what's called soft wood. And this is soft wood, that's pine. Hardwoods are much more slow growing trees. Oak, beech, uh, um, uh, mahogany, but, but stuff that comes from rainforest you don't want, actually want to touch. Uh, but this is, this is oak, okay, that is a hardwood. And if you feel it, well, it's, you probably won't notice the difference. You notice it when you're trying to drill into it. But hardwoods are going to be much more hard wearing, softwoods a lot easier to work with. So because this is softwood, we can just drill straight into it. We don't need to drill those pilot holes. So but with that, that, we are. So let's pick some screws that we think are going to be suitable for this. So I think some nice big screws, which we're going to yeah. put in there like that, and there, and there like that. Okay. okay. So you basically need your electric screwdriver. Now, this is, you can get lots of different sizes of screwdrivers, electric screwdrivers. This is one, that's a yep. plain travels overhead. This is slightly bigger than this, and I just figured that you might actually be better off with a slightly smaller electric screwdriver. Yeah. But Easy. the great thing about these, okay, yeah. is that they also act as a drill. So this can be a screwdriver yeah. or a drill. Now, have you ever seen what this is called before? It's called, a, the end of it's it. called a chuck. Can you see when I screw that, the when I tighten that up, up, rotate it one way, and these little jaws come out okay and they grip whatever you put in there so if I wanted to put in this I do that and then I tighten it up all right and then you just turn it and that tightens it right but also if I wanted to put in a say drill same thing again put it in there tighten that up like that you see how it grips that and then you put a drill in just make sure it's in reasonably and like that and then again tighten it up all right done now what's quite useful actually if you can is have two run at the same time because you don't want to be swapping over yeah. so we're going to set up one of these as a driller and then one of them as a, a screwdriver so which one would you rather have as the lightweight one because that one's slightly heavier probably the, the screwdriver, screwdriver. Yeah. okay so let's put can you do that can you put that back in there mm -hmm. Don't touch that, which is the trigger, otherwise, so just release that slightly. And then tighten it up. And then put your hand around it and grab it and really tight. Now I'll just show you on the top here. See there's these numbers, right? Yeah. And that is... One. Okay, uh, and I only show you just what this does. So just take this piece of wood, and I think this is quite useful to know. Just try drilling that into there okay, okay. and it's with it's on one all right okay. i'm just gonna get it started for you okay all right just try that and you'll and it'll click mind your fingers whoops sorry it's okay you didn't do anything wrong i tell you what in this instance we probably should have drilled that little hole so let's just pop this in here let's drill a little pipe hole. <laughs> and you've got a little starting point okay now just try that i just wanted to see what what this this thing does Money fingers. <laughs> right. Can you see how that went? Yeah. That is to stop you pushing it in too far. Okay. So if you want to make it go in further or tighten up to a certain level of like tightness, the higher the number, the more it's going to go down. The more it's going to okay. go to a level of tightness. Okay. Okay. So if you were to now set that to say nine, try that now. <laughs> And you don't want, if you can, you don't want to have that sort of uh, gir girring noise. So really try and push down hard if you can. <coughs> right, that's great. But then again, once it got to the bottom. And just to tell you that screwdrivers like this have one way for going in, which is always clockwise. Yeah. And another Once way, if you push up. that for going out, which is that way. So can you now take that 
screw it out. Yep. Push down hard. Okay, great. Perfect. So I just wanted to show you what that meant. So that's that. So we're going to just put in, um, uh, you know, I, I'm going to go back on what I said. And even though uh, we, it is softwood, I still want you to drill some holes. So we're going to put this in place and we're going to drill that to hold that in place. All right. So just with in the big one. The no, we can fill the full, full little. I'll tell you what, an easy way to do it, Scott. Uh, where's the pen gone? What do I do with the pen? Oh, it's in my pocket. No. Pencil. Oh, it's in my pocket. No, it isn't. Uh, small holes and I try and find the Pencil. pen. Where is it? There it is. Right. Mark through those holes with that. So place it in position and just mark through the holes. So dob down. Dob down. And again. Okay. And while we're here, might as well do this one. Okay, so now it's great. So we now have got the marks there. So you're now going to drill out those holes. Okay. So this is where we do need our glasses. Mind your hands. Always keep your hands away from where you're drilling. Okay. And okay, so careful with that. I'll hold it at this end. You could use it, move the hand out of the way. That's it. Oops. Hang on a second. That noise. Yeah. Sounds a bit weird. That is because the the, screw, the drill. Is in reverse. No. Nope. Push it again. Push. <laughs> lift it up. Lift it up. That's it. This one is what's called a hammer drill. Ah. And that is for drilling into stone. Do you see what it says that hammer's on there? Keep. So we need to turn that off and turn it onto either just plain old drill or yep. if we're drilling, we'll put it on that. Okay, so drill again and now you won't have that horrible noise. Whoops, it's going the wrong way. Always clockwise when you drill it in. Okay, that again. Just pull it out. To keep, 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 keep your finger on the trigger. Lift up. That's it. And then drill the other holes. So now, to screw these in, you swap your thing over. Make sure that's set on nice and high and whatever. Put it on to thirteen. Oh, it's not actually right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So put the screw in the hole and then screw it. Okay, so that's our base and then these things are going to go like that and like that okay so we've got to screw those in so again we might want to mark where the brackets are going to go right so you might want to you might want to because we want to make sure we put the right one on the right side so you might want to put a little letter on there to say that a goes to a b goes to b and B goes to B because once you take them off, we're going to be screw We're going to be cutting those out again, and we want to know which one goes to which. So again, we need to drill those those, those, those holes out. On with the drill. So now, as you see, we would have lost our thought of which one goes to which, but that one has got that one. Has got that. So this is going to be a bit tricky because you're doing it on the side, but surely don't you? Wouldn't you just turn it like? You could do that. that and then Loving your logic. Do that and then do that. <laughs> Learning a thing or two <laughs> from my son. Why not? Okay. So this is where the fact you've drilled those holes makes life a whole lot easier.
Okay, great. So that's now a fairly solid support, okay? Move the brackets out of the way. Now to finish off the project, all we need to do... Ready? Yep, is attach it to our bit of wood. So do you want to get, it's very heavy, but can you lift that bit of wood up? Right, now I have had an idea while I was running away to try and get the screwdriver bit. Is actually I was being a bit stupid because rather than position it like that, you could theoretically have it that way up and then you get a much, you get an even better. Yeah, that's cool. That's called changing the design as you go along, which is absolutely okay. Comes from years of experience. And a wife who mutters it to you underneath her breath. Okay, so now this is kind of tricky. We've got to try and attach this to this. So I'm thinking it's probably going to be easier to turn this over. Right. And now we've laid out how it's going to be. Okay. And then attach it oh, where we need it to be. So. Oh. We know that that needs to go on there like that. Yeah. Okay, so this is where we're going to use one of those kind of strange shaped funny kind of brackets. Yes. Because we want to attach this to this like that. Now, to hold it in place while we're doing this, what we're going to do is just put a temporary screw in. So if you get your screw, if you get the, the um, drill, and just drill at an angle down there. Like that? Yeah. Well, hang on a second, just let me hold this in place, okay. Ready? Okay, yeah. Okay, right. keep going, a bit further. That'll do, great. So what we're now gonna do is put a screw in. Now that screw, I don't think it's gonna be longer, so we need a light, slightly longer screw. Okay. Let's have a look. That looks about perfect. So we want that. So now you get your screwdriver. Now this might end up staying in there, I but you don't need the extension. No, you don't. But it doesn't do any harm to have okay. it on. Now push down with all your might, really hard. Oops. Okay. Okay, that'll do, that'll do. So, are we happy with the position? Now, the only thing I would say is it's slightly not on the edge there, yeah. which is a bit of an issue because we've got to put a br bracket on here. So I think we have to take that out again. Okay. Doesn't matter. Should I do it in reverse? Yeah, do reverse. Okay. And it just slipped. So, we'll try that again. But don't take it out all the way. Stop, 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 stop. And I'm going to move it over there and try and hold it in place as you draw that in, all right? You, you push that down. Hang on a sec, Scott. There we go. Hang on. Okay, go. Great. So that's more in line. Yeah. So let's do the same at this side. So drill a hole first. Up there? Yeah. I'm going to say stop. Let's move like, okay, go. Okay, great. And back out again. Okay, super. Now get your screw, another one of those long ones. Okay, again, I'll hold it while you screw. Great. So that's now held in position. Now that, if you see, it's a bit wibbly wobbly. And I yeah. think if you rode your bike over that, that would not it would be a disaster. So this is where we want to put this strengthening bracket on here. And these things just seem to work quite well as far as I was concerned. So how does yeah. that, or even that, even better, look? So if you mark with your pen, 
So we're at, um, here. No, that's the DSO is. The, wherever those holes are. Okay. Okay, and let's do the same round this side. How did I have it? Uh, like, what, how was it? I can't remember how it was. It was like... Like that? No. Like what? Uh, like that. Was it? Okay, great. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Okay, and get your drill again. So this is just to give it that extra support. Because we recognise from that thing I told you at the start, yeah. this is going to be the weak point. The number of times you ride your bike over this, this joint here, you can see it's wobbling already. Yeah. It's just going to fall just, apart. Yeah. So drill, drill these. So while we've got it like this, let's just put this bracket on, okay? So I think we go back to these screws, yep. And you're right, sometimes if, you've got, if that's a bit wibbly wobbly, it's not too good to have it like that. So it doesn't really matter, but just make it a little bit easier to handle like that. So, screws, okay. Unless I'm very much mistaken, that should now be. Feel how solid that is. Not gonna move. So let's put it on the ground, and I guess oh, the um, proof of the pudding is going to be you're going to get your bike. How's it get? See. That's just one simple project that your child could get involved in. And what have we taught there? We've talked about measuring, we've talked about safety, we've talked about choosing different types of screws, uh, there's mechanical engineering, there's stress analysis, there's design, there's, there's, there's project engineering, there's um, prototyping, um, and there's illustration and graphic design just from that simple little project so fun entertaining practical and yet something which i believe you know it, it's almost stem isn't it science technology engineering and whatever the other one is maths is it i can't remember but of course the proof of the pudding is whether it works and there's no guarantee of that <laughs>